Thanks for checking out this movie review video. So this is for the 1973 Giallo film, The Killer is One of Thirteen, and it is what I have watched to finish off The Forgotten Gialli Volume 1 from Vinegar Syndrome, which this has been pretty fun. I didn't really like trauma all that much. Um, it was, eh, I don't think I'd really watch it again. Maybe in the right mood. Uh, the Police Are Blundering in the Dark, that was kind of a so good it's bad. I will definitely watch that again. And I think I would probably watch uh, The Killer is One of Thirteen again because uh, it was interesting enough. My one problem with it, though, is the fact that it's very talky. You know, there's a lot of dialogue in it, and it's subtitled, which it goes fast because the characters actually speak relatively fast. I'm not a super fast reader, so uh, when I was taking notes, I really had to, to make sure I didn't miss anything because a lot of stuff happens through the dialogue. Um, I had to make sure that I paused every single time I wanted to take a note, and uh, yeah, it gets to be gets to be a bit of a pain, to be honest, but um, relatively solid story, relatively solid story, I liked it. Let's talk about this. Directed by Javier Aguirre, who also did, um, the only other horror film I could definitely find um, was Count Dracula's Great Love, so I put that one down, uh, written by Aguirre and Alberto S. Insua who also wrote the script for Count Dracula's Great Love, which I thought was interesting. Paul Nashi, or Nashi, 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 I don't know how it's actually said, uh, plays Ernest, the driver in this film, who I thought was going to end up being the killer at one point, but, well, I mean, there were a bunch of people I thought would be the killer at, at some point, because uh, they, do, they do a pretty good job with the red herrings in this, I think. Uh, he was famous for Night of the Werewolf, Night of the Howling Beast, Howl of the Devil, just to name a few of the films, very well known for being a werewolf. He is a big name. So when I saw him on the list of cast members, I was like, oh, that's kind of cool. So I was actually kind of surprised that his role was as minimal as it actually was. And that's why I was really thinking he's not playing a huge role, which usually points to the person who's probably the killer because they want to have them in the story but not show them too much that you actually start to get suspicious. So he was in it like just enough and actually could have had some motive because he was in a relationship with, what is her, Elena, the maid, who was having an affair with Harry. And so I thought that, you know, there's some motivation. So maybe that's why he ended up killing some people and then we would find more motivation out, blah, blah, blah. But that didn't end up happening, obviously. And if you're watching this, you've probably already seen the film. So you know what I'm talking about. So anyway, uh, it has a very uplifting score to start uh, the, sh the movie uh, and what looks like a well-to-do area that they're going through. So it stands in contrast to what's actually going on, to why everyone's being assembled uh, with this get-together that Lisa has set up uh, to basically accuse people and just point fingers all over the place and make people nervous, in essence. And, um, well, I'll talk a little bit more about motive at the very end of this with her because I have some theories. It wasn't 100% clear to me, and I would love other people's theories on what happened with this in the comments. So I'll get to that, though. Harry gets painted as a playboy immediately in this film. As Lisa says, she needs to be careful of him, basically. He then says that he's interested in trying to charm uh, women away from their husbands, in essence. You know, they, when everyone's out there talking, when they first get there around the pool, uh, Harry makes comment about, you know, looking for some ladies, in essence. And they're like, oh, well, a bunch of the women are married here, so what's available to you is very limited and he makes some sort of comment about like liking the thrill of going after a married woman uh which i don't know if i would do that if i were him um it just makes people hyper aware so if you are going to try and have sex with their wife then they're looking for that so not smart on his part if he's going to be doing that um then you see that he turns on the charm with elena very early almost immediately honestly and starts to try to have sex with her basically as soon as he gets settled in his guest room uh so this guy you know he's painted as a playboy but he just exudes it he just goes he hits the ground running as soon as he shows up to this place um it's crazy it's crazy but i like his character actually like i felt like he injected a lot of fun into the film because it's kind of like who's running around and sneaking around on who and, yeah, who's sleeping around, basically. When you see everyone talking in the backyard, you get a feeling of a murder mystery like Clue getting set up, even though this is obviously before Clue. 
They also give a lot of the needed backstory in those conversations. So this goes back to what I was saying. There's a lot of talking involved and it's important. So you really do need to pay attention to what's being said. Um, so much so that, you know, like that dinner scene in essence is a long scene of a lot of talking going on and there's a lot of information that gets thrown out. So that's kind of like, that sets you up to know that like, this is how the film's going to be. You're really going to have to pay attention to the dialogue because it's going to tell you pretty much everything you need to know. They're going to tell you more than they show you. And I feel like that's definitely what happened. All the early uh, introductions of characters actually kind of had my head spinning because there's so many characters and they were being introduced so fast. I was kind of like, oh my God, you're going so quick. Like, how am I going to keep these people straight? But they did kind of slow it down after that. And I do think that I was helped a little bit by the initial dinner scene because there were people, you know, saying each other's names and going back and forth in conversation. So that kind of gave me time to like pull it in. But at first I was very overwhelmed. I'm like, well... What did I expect from a film called The Killer is One of Thirteen? I had to, I should have assumed there would be at least 13 characters. So yeah, makes sense. 13 people assembled on the 13th. They point this out when they're at the dinner table. I was like, uh-oh, if that isn't foreshadowing, I don't know what is. Someone's going to die. But one of my biggest problems is why do we have to wait so long for people to actually die? That's one of my biggest issues. I think that the kill should have been littered throughout the film a lot better it really what it is is all the actual kills on screen come in the last third of the film which i feel like they should have just been paced a lot better because it seems like it's very slow it's very dialogue driven and then all of a sudden it like picks up a lot at the end and then it's pretty much over so i don't know i just feel like you could have had less pace pacing problems because i do feel like it has pacing problems if you would put some more of the actual like killing action in there and people reacting to that, honestly, just saying my feelings on it. Lisa just seemed mad at everyone when she's explaining the reason for the gathering at the dinner table. And I like how she systematically explains why everyone is a suspect. I mean, they could have easily just left it at you're all suspects. And, and I know that someone here did this, but she then goes on to say, and she doesn't say names a lot of the times, but she's like, there's a situation where this person could be a suspect because of this, and this person's suspect because of this. Sometimes she calls out people specifically, and sometimes people call themselves out because she throws out that scenario and they're like, I think you're talking about me, basically. So um, it's a lot, and uh, I was very surprised that they went that far with it because a lot of times with these films, they do have a tendency to just be like, you're all suspects, and we'll figure things out later. Instead, she's just like laying everything out. So it shows you that this is what she's been doing with her time in the two years since her husband died, is she's just been doing this, investigating, is what it seems like at the dinner table, is that like that's been her sole focus, that's all she's been looking into for two years. I like how Jorge won't stop talking about his cannery. Uh, eventually he does, but... At least up until the point that they finish dinner, basically. He brings up his cannery so many times. I wish we find out later it's a tuna cannery. So, yeah, I would, I would assume pretty popular. People love canned tuna. Uh, but the fact that he just keeps talking and talking and talking about it, it's just like, oh my god, it's so annoying. But it adds cork, like a lot of these giallo films. When Lisa's explaining Arlen's paintings and his forgery dealings, you get the idea she spent the entire two years, uh, her husband's been dead, investigating everyone on her own. And then you wonder if the movie will ever leave this dinner table. Or is she going to go into this, this amount of detail for each and every person? I legitimately started to fear that the entirety of the rest of the film was going to be at that dinner table. I really, really did. Because of how long that scene went and how much detail she was going into, especially with Arlen and his forgeries, I was just like, oh my gosh. If if the, the whole movie is just them talking at this dinner table, I'm not going to like it. Um, so, finally they got away from the dinner table, and I was like, oh my god, thank you so much. You would think Cecilia would want to stay away from a tryst with Harry, since everyone was made aware that he slept with women there. Not only was everyone made aware that he has slept with women there, by Lisa, but he also had said at the at the pool, like I had said before, that basically he was on the hunt and that he didn't mind going after married women. So like 
All the information's out there. Everyone knows that Harry's looking to bone married women, and everyone knows that he's boned some of the married women there. So you would think that if you don't want to get caught, you wouldn't do something while you're there. Wait down the road. Wait for another time. So it just seems kind of unintelligent. Whenever someone says they know who the killer is and then won't say it right then, they're going to die. Yes, and that's what happens because Cecilia says it at one point that she knows who it is, but she doesn't want to go into it because it's too complicated. And then um, Bertha, Francis's mother, goes into it and says that she thinks she knows who it is and she's going to tell someone later. Both of them end up dying. That's one of the rules of Giallo. That happens all the time in Giallo films. So just know this. If you're watching a Giallo film and someone says, I have the information, but I need to meet you somewhere to tell you, or I'll tell you later, it's too much to explain right now. They're getting it. They're definitely getting it. And that's what happened. I like how Lisa has Henry go through everyone's things, and he reports that Francis has a bunch of real filthy pornography. Um... First of all, I was just like, oh, she's just having her butler go through and rifle through everyone's stuff. Wonderful. That's really messed up. But then it got to the part where it was funny then where he's just like, and Francis just has all this porn, like really filthy stuff, which I think is what he's reading later on when Bertha tells him to go to bed when they're in the room together. Um, yeah, it, he just like travels around with a giant suitcase of porn. All right. Good for him. <laughs> As soon as I saw a the black-gloved hand start to open a door, which is in the last third of the film, as I already said, I was like, oh, thank goodness, here we go. We're about to start getting some actual deaths in this. Let's get to it. Let's start to figure out who this might be. So that's when the excitement really does start to happen. Elena wants to leave with Harry, but he seems to be done with her after they have sex, basically. Yes, they have their little tryst real quick, which I believe was in the pool house. And um, she's like, I want to come with you. I want to get out of here. And he's just like, uh, yeah, you, you know, we'll see. We'll, we'll, we'll see. He's like, I love you. You're, you're a beautiful thing. But, uh, you know, we'll see. And I'm like, Ugh. yeah, he, he can't. Like, that dude cannot commit. Like, that's just his, his way. That is his way. Cecilia and Harry got killed very close to one another. Um, that's one of those things where, like, I'm glad the deaths happened. And I specifically did not see Harry's coming because I thought he was such a strong, interesting character that they would keep him alive or he would end up being the killer. Um, but no, they, they killed him right after Cecilia. Um, I, my problem there is that I do feel like there should have been some more space in the film between their kills. Like I was saying, you know, all the kills kind of happen clumped together. So it would have been much better if they were spread out a little bit more. So especially those two kills, like it literally was just like Cecilia gets it. Harry gets it within like a minute of Cecilia getting it, and I'm just like, I, I hadn't even, like, fully processed Cecilia's death, so it wasn't as satisfying, so, yeah, should have spaced that out more. Did Laura insinuate that she's been prostituting herself to rich guys to make money for her and Guillermo? When they have that big blow-up, and she, he's like, you've been sleeping with these guys, blah, 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 and she's like, where do you think the money's been coming from? I was like, wait a minute, is she saying she's basically been, like, a high-end prostitute? Is that what's been going on with her, and that's how they're making a part of their fortune? I don't... I think so. That's what it seemed like. Henry's supposition that Lisa's husband was killed by a feminine crime, and Cecilia and Harry by a masculine crime, is actually not that uncommon for the thinking at that time. Um, I thought that was going to be a way to really um, throw people off back then, to be like, oh, obviously they're very brutish killings of um harry and cecilia so therefore it can't be a woman but you know maybe it's two separate killers because of what happened um with lisa's husband that's right sorry i trailed off there i like the touch of the drops of blood as bertha's being strangled with the wire i did like that where they're showing the kind of close-up of the wire being pulled around her neck and you see like the drops of blood kind of coming out while it's happening Nice touch. Good practical effects on that for the time. I like that. Oh, how cute. Arlen and Martha have fallen in love because of what they have in common. And what they have in common is the others look down upon them. Arlen for the fact that he commits art forgery. And Martha for the fact that she's a waitress. Those things are not the same, but 
in this film, they they feel like they're the same person because they're being looked down upon for these reasons. So interesting, I guess. I, I just thought the whole injection of this kind of love story that takes shape was weird in this. But, you know, that's Giallo. That's what Giallo does. It gets weird. It always gets weird, pretty much. I like the tension building of seeing the skewer that was coming from the killer's hand uh, with uh, the black glove hand towards Laura before she gets stabbed in the shower because it keeps going back to like her kind of like in fear in the shower like recoiled against the wall and this and then the skewer like slowly coming at her the music added to that as well but just the fact that it keeps going between and the anticipation that she's about to get it and then the stabbing portion actually looked solid enough that it was a good payoff um that was a good kill probably the best kill in my opinion uh, kind of a brutal scene when Guillermo bashes Ernest's head with a wrench. I know they don't actually show it. They show the aftermath of it, which looks good. But just the insinuation that he's, like, beating his head with that wrench was like, ooh, man. Then you get that pretty prolonged car crash scene of Guillermo going off the hill, which we find out later Henry, the butler, had, um, broke, had, um, cut the brakes so that if Guillermo tried to get away, he would die. Yeah, so, um, but that scene of him tumble, of his car tumbling down the hill, pretty prolonged. It was, it was pretty good. Cool touch with the shadow of a person moving across the door after Henry closes it. That's at the very end when you think kind of everyone had left, uh, and they go through the door, Lisa and Henry together, and they're talking, and he closes the door behind him, and then like a shadow moves across it of a person. So I was like, oh, the killer's still there. The the killer's still at large. So there's kind of a question with that because then the stuff that happens next between Henry and Lisa and then Arlen and Martha makes me like, wait, hold on a second. So I rewound it after I got done and I was like, what is really going on here? So I, I have some theories. I'm not 100% on it. So I'm really going to want people who have seen this to weigh in in the comments and kind of give me your opinion on what you think's going on. So the button, I feel like the button was supposed to prove that Henry was the killer, at least per what Lisa was saying when she was talking to him, because she found on that jacket he was wearing that there was a missing button um, because of Bertha. And it was good, I guess, good thinking on Bertha's part to like actually pull something from the, well, actually it might not have been, actually that may have been planted because there's a question as to where did the jacket come from? Because we do see the scenes of the black glove killer actually putting the jacket into someone's uh, dresser, basically. Uh, and then uh, there was also the conversation that I think, who was it? Was it Jorge had about where his, no, I think it was Guillermo, about where his jacket had gone. And Laura tells him that it had, that she didn't know where it was, basically. So, there was an insinuation that, like, the killer actually had taken one of Guillermo's jackets, and then the button was taken off of that by Bertha as she was being killed, and then Henry's wearing it at the end, which would make you think that Henry was the killer, but we do see that little segment of the killer taking that jacket on a hanger and putting it somewhere. So then you start questioning, was it actually Henry's, though? Because it may not have been. He may have just been wearing it. And that kind of led me to, is Lisa the one who did this? Did she set all this up? Because you don't know really if it's a man or a woman because you just see the gloved hand, really. I assume the button in Henry's hand at the end means Lisa was the killer of Carlos all along since Guillermo's jacket was taken and then moved elsewhere. Henry says he did everything for Lisa and then tries to kill her because he realizes she's framing him. So the big thing with that is that they, they played it pretty well in a sense to confuse you, where you do believe that Henry is the killer of everyone, basically. When Lisa puts on what I think is a performance where she notices, you know, the missing button and then she's like, oh my God, you're the killer. Because his reaction, he starts saying like, oh, I did it all for you. Let me explain all that stuff. And then he tries to kill her. So... Initially, you think, okay, well, he is the killer because of the way he's reacting, because especially because he tries to kill her then. But after you see the ending with the button, I, I rewound and I'm like, well, you could see it as 
um, him realizing that she set him up and that's why he actually tries to kill her then because he makes a comment about he did everything for her he's like oh i did everything for you but that does work both ways so i'm still kind of confused as to which way it was supposed to have gone comments please let's 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 talk that one over because I, I really need to work this one out and like i said i watched the ending twice and i'm still not 100 percent Overall, the camera work is good in this. Uh, there are a bunch of cool rotating shots and movement with and around characters that actually kind of reminds me a lot of the styles of Mario Bava, which isn't a big, you know, surprise because Bava was a big deal back then. He was very influential from a stylistic standpoint. So the fact that, you know, uh, Aguirre took that same style to a degree doesn't surprise me at all but it looks good i like it like he if you notice the camera moves a lot and it moves very smoothly and it moves around characters and with characters and uh looks pretty good for the most part the adr is off a good amount which is interesting because i think i don't know if they record if they filmed in a different language and then overlaid another language because it sounds like i think it's is it italian but it was filmed in spanish I'm not 100% sure on that. I couldn't find that information, but I'm sure someone can. Uh, I probably didn't try hard enough, to be honest. I think the kills should have been paced out better. Yeah, since they're clustered at the end, that bears repeating. And there's something very interesting to point out about this. Notice, there was no nudity in this film, which is very uncommon, in my opinion, for Giallo. At least the Giallo films I've seen, and I've seen over 40 Giallo films at this point. Every single one of them, I believe every single one of them up until this one has nudity. So it was very interesting. There were a few moments where you almost got nudity, like the part where I think it was Laura was about to take her bra off and then they cut away. Interesting. So, uh, yeah, not like it's a big deal, but it, I just found it interesting because all the other films seem to have it. It's very geared that way. So overall, I thought this was decent enough. I, I enjoyed the storyline of it. Obviously, I'm still kind of confused of it. Uh, confused with it i already told you the good good and the bad on it so out of five stars with half stars in play i'm gonna go ahead and give it three stars i'm gonna give it three stars it feels good there so like i said i am now done with volume one of the forgotten jolly from vinegar syndrome i do have volume two i don't have volume three but i have volume two so i'm interested to start digging into that and i will be digging into it pretty soon so you can look for all of those uh to be added to my channel so, like I said, put some comments down here. Let's talk about this, or just Giallo in general. We can do that. Um, but do me a quick favor. Hit that subscribe button if you like this video or any video you have ever seen on my channel. That is your way to repay me, and it really does help keep me motivated to keep doing these videos. If you're watching these videos and you're like, I really hope he keeps doing reviews or does a specific review, you can reach out to me. Um, you can send me an email at brutalbattlepodcast at gmail.com. And Brutal is spelled B-R-E-W-T-A-L, Brutal Battle Podcast at gmail.com. But if you want me to keep doing these, subscribe. That is the best way to motivate me. It truly is. Uh, also hit the notification bell button because that way you'll know when I'm putting up new videos, whether it's an in-depth review like this or a no-spoiler review or unboxing or haul video or whatever. But regardless, I really do thank you for taking your time to watch this. And until next time, keep it brutal.